Hey booktube, this is Samantha and I'm coming to you with an extremely long, ambitious April TBR. So I apologize ahead of time because I know this is gonna be a little on the long side. The reason why it's so long is because I'm actually gonna be participating in two readathons for this month. One of them is the Magical Readathon, which is from April 1st to April 30th. And then the second one that I'm participating in is Dewey's 24 hour readathon, which is all day on April 6th, which is a Saturday. So I'm going to go through the magical readathon first and then go into my TBR for Dewey's 24 hour readathon. So first of all, if you haven't heard of the Magical Readathon, it is hosted by Book Roast, who actually created the Magical Readathon. It's basically for all of us Harry Potter fans out there who want to take advantage of living and being immersed in the Harry Potter world as much as possible. So she created the OWL exams for us to take based on reading certain kinds of books. And then in August, you can also take your exams for the newts, which is a higher level up for people who don't know Harry Potter. So I've always wanted to participate in this challenge in the past, but it always seemed really overwhelming because there'd be a list of like 12 owls and I'd wanna do all the owls. <laughs> <laughs> so I could never really make up my mind. And then this year, she was amazing enough to actually create different careers and kind of give you a little background about each one and then the specific owls that you would have to complete in order to have that job. It was helpful for me because then I actually have a narrow amount of owls that I need to complete and not feel so overwhelmed to do all of them. The career that I decided to do is a librarian and it's a little bit different in the wizarding world. It's more of a tomb raider kind of thing where you go into different areas that need to be explored and you break curses, fighting different monsters that might be guarding these highly priced tomes or hmm, maybe you could say a tome raider. <gasps> Actually, I have to give credit to my husband for that joke because Tim was the one who <laughs> came up with that. In order to be a librarian, I have to complete five owls, but I want to get a job as a librarian. They have like a little career advertisement at the bottom where it says to do a charms owl as well. So, I'm aiming for six. The first owl that I need to complete is for Ancient Runes, and that requires to read a book that is a retelling. And I picked Briar Rose by Jane Yolen. This is a book that's pretty old. It was published in about 1992, and it's a retelling of Sleeping Beauty. So basically it's about this main character named Rebecca, who always loved the telling of the story of Briar Rose according to her grandmother Gemma. But the story that Gemma told was always a little different from the main story everyone else has heard of Sleeping Beauty. So her Gemma is really close to the end of her life and she tells Rebecca that she is Briar Rose. Rebecca has a really hard time believing this, and so she starts digging into Gemma's past to figure out why Gemma would say that she was Sleeping Beauty. There's barbed wire on the cover, that's because Gemma's story mainly takes place in World War II during the Holocaust. I love this book when I was in middle school, I've read it twice. It's pretty easy to read through, it's got pretty decent sized text, it's on the middle grade going to the young adult. And it's been a while since I've read it again, so I'm gonna be jumping into this. The next owl that I need to complete is Arithmacy, and that requires reading a book with two or more authors. This was a little difficult for me to find, but I lucked into it. <laughs> I only have one book that is written by two or more authors, and that is The Talisman by Stephen King and Peter Straub. 
this is the book I've actually been meaning to get to. I recently did a major unhaul of all my books trying to make room on my shelves and this is a book that I've been wanting to get to but I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna feel about it. So it's kind of a good opportunity for me to get to it and find out if I am actually gonna like it or not. This book is about a man named Jack Sawyer whose father's already passed away, his mom is dying, and he comes across this way where he could go to a different realm where he could possibly save his mom from dying. There really isn't much else on the back cover, and so I really don't know much more than that. I've always kind of operated under the assumption that's more of a mystery thriller with the realm being thrown in, kind of like Stephen King's Dark Tower series, if you're familiar with that. So I enjoy the Dark Tower series, so maybe I'll like this too. I'm not 100% sure though. In case I don't like the talisman, I actually have a backup book. When I picked up my books from the library, I found that one of the books that I picked up was also more than two authors. So I was pretty excited about that and that is Dragons of Autumn Twilight by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. This book I don't know anything about it. It's been recommended to me a few times when I tell people that I'm looking for older fantasy books. All I had to see was Dungeons and Dragons and I knew I'm gonna love it. But I've recently been recently been playing in a Dungeons and Dragons campaign for the very first time since September 2018 and loving it. It's so much fun. I'm having a great time. And so I actually been picking up books that are related to Dungeons and Dragons worlds, you could say. And some of the books I've already read are the Drizzt books. These are book one and book two of, um, it's called The Unforgotten Realms saga there's like over 20 books in the series but there's this trilogy loving these books so easy to read action-packed i love the character development of the main character drizzt loving it so when i heard when i saw it's dungeons and dragons i knew i was gonna love it because i'm loving the drizzt books so it's very likely that i might just read that book instead of the talisman the next owl that I need to read is Defense Against Dark Arts, and that requires reading a book that starts with the letter R. And I've found from other people that are also doing this readathon, that's a pretty hard book to find, and I agree. <laughs> I didn't look too hard on my shelves, but I was looking through the books that I want to read on my Goodreads, and it was hard to find a book starting with R. So when I was going to my library, I was scanning the shelves of the sci-fi and fantasy section, which really sadly is only one shelf at my library. It makes me really sad. I was scanning the shelves and I found this book. Now, this is gonna be interesting. I have no idea if I'm gonna like this or not. It has decent reviews on Goodreads, and that is The Rowan by Anne McCaffrey. It's the first book in its series, and from what I understand is that there are these people that are called talents that move things from moon to moon rather than planet to planet, such as cargo, people, necessary items, whatever. They're pretty important people in this universe. So along comes this girl who seems to have even stronger powers than the other talents have. And this young girl receives a message from a different talent saying that there are aliens coming. And so they have to band all the talents together to try and fight against the aliens that are coming to attack. So normally aliens aren't necessarily my thing, but I think it's more of aliens being used to scare. Like with Stephen King, I don't like Stephen King books that have aliens in them. It's just not scary for me. I don't get it. Not my thing. 
But when I read sci-fi, which I haven't read much of, but when I read sci-fi, I enjoy the aliens being in there. So we'll see how this goes. I think this is more sci-fi than fantasy for sure, but not sure what my thoughts are going to be. We'll find out. So I'm going to be talking about the next two books that are on my TBR and they actually apply to both of my TBR lists for the Magical Readathon and Dewey's 24 Hour Readathon. And for the owl that I need to read, it is History of Magic, which requires reading a book that's been published 10 years ago or longer. I'm actually going to be reading two books because they're both extremely thin. <laughs> I'm probably going to blow through them in an hour each. But I'm pretty excited about reading them because it's Fear Street by R.L. Stein. When I fell in love with Goosebumps when I first started reading, it got to a point in high school where I was wanting something a little bit scarier. And that's when I found out about Fear Street. Now, I actually never read the Fear Street series. I believe that there's, I want to say there's like 10 or 11 books in this series. And I've actually never read these, but I did read Fear Street Cheerleaders and I read Fear Street Saga. Unfortunately, my library didn't have book one of Fear Street Saga, but it did have the first book in the Cheerleaders. I love this series when I was in high school. I specifically even remember a certain death scene from the third book. So I'm actually really excited about getting back into this. And I'm really curious about how this is going to turn out for me. Maybe it'll be a little different because I'm older, but I'm thinking I might enjoy it. We'll see. So the last owl that I have to read in order to be a librarian is Transfiguration. And for Transfiguration, I need to read a book that either has sprayed edges or a red cover. Now, when I first read this prompt, I had no idea what sprayed edges were. And for those of you who do know, you're like, well, it's obvious, Sam. And it wasn't obvious for me. So sprayed edges, if you don't know, is when the edges of the paper are colored. So like black or red. Um, a lot of you guys have probably seen Crooked Kingdom. That's sprayed edges. I do not have any books with sprayed edges. None. Zero. Zilch. I actually don't necessarily like sprayed edges. That meant a red cover. And I have two books that I am interested in reading. So we'll just kind of see what kind of mood I'm in. The first book I'm going to talk about and the first one I originally picked up was Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This would be a reread for me. I really enjoyed this book. For those of you who don't know, it's a villain story. I don't even think it's anti-hero. It's just like, he's a villain and there's another guy. They both have powers and they're using them in not so good a way. I remember really enjoying this book. I haven't read Vengeful yet. So what I was planning on doing was rereading this one and then getting Vengeful from my library. That's option one. But option two is Wizard's First Rule by Terry Goodkind. This is a book that I've actually been meaning to read because I have, I think the first eight or nine books in the series because I got them from a library book sale where each book was $1, $1. And I was like, oh yes, oh yes, please. <laughs> but I haven't read the books yet to even see if I enjoy them or not. So, I want to read this one, see if I'm actually even interested in the series. And it has this beautiful color with this pretty red dragon on it. We'll see what I want to read. The last book for the Magical Readathon is The Charms Owl in order to get a job as a librarian. And this is purely just to read any adult work. I have a lot of adult works behind me and I even have some in here for options. So it might be that I might stick with this, we'll see. But let's say I'm not feeling one of them or I start reading one of them and I'm not liking it. I have another backup option and that is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I've actually heard pretty mixed reviews about this. 
we have half the people who hate the book because the characters are way too pretentious and the other half of the audience really enjoys the book. From what I understand is this is a book about a class of students, about five or six, really small class. They're studying the dead languages like ancient Greek, Latin, whatnot. And this average Joe guy comes into the class by happenstance, then someone dies and you're trying to figure out who's the murderer. That's all I've heard about this book, but I've heard that there's a lot of twists and turns through it. So don't know what that means. We'll see if by knowing that they're pretentious, maybe I can put that to the side. We'll see. We'll see. So that's it for the Owl's Magical Readathon books. And that in and of itself is usually a lot for me to read in one month. And then I have the Dewey's 24 hour readathon on top of that. The next books that I'm going to be talking about, I'm mainly really going to be focusing on the shorter books. And then I have options of bigger books that I would like to get into and just using the Dewey's 24 hour readathon as a way to get a big chunk of it read. The first book I'm going to talk about is one that I didn't even know the book existed. So when I saw it, that it was available at my library, I was so excited. So that is Stephen King's Creep Show. I've seen the movie a couple of times already, absolutely loved it, but I didn't realize that it was a full on comic book. Did not realize that. So I picked it up. I'm really excited to read it in a different form of media and it's, super short, super short. I'm probably gonna get through it in like 20 minutes. The next book I'm gonna be talking about, I have no idea what it's about. I've seen it, but no idea. And that is We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. Nothing, I know nothing. The inside cover really doesn't give me much information. It just says that there's this girl, 18 years old, lives with her sister, and her family's dead. And something about cleaning. No idea. I mean, it looks spooky. I love the artwork on this cover. So we'll see. I mean, it's really short. Again, that's why I picked it up for this readathon. If you know anything about it, if you've read it in the past and you really enjoyed it, really liked it, could you let me know in the comments? No spoilers or anything, but I'm just curious about what I'm getting into with this book. The next book I'm going to be talking about is Fables and Reflections, which is volume six of the Sandman series by Neil Gaiman. If you don't know about the Sandman series, it's a graphic novel, as you can see here, and it's centered on the Sandman. He's the main character where he is in charge of making sure everyone goes to sleep and doesn't sleep for too long or whatnot. He interacts with his brothers and sisters, which are death, envy, gluttony, I can't list them all. I know I'm forgetting a lot, but there seems to be a power struggle going on between who's going to be controlling over sleep and kind of manipulating the situation based off of Sam Man's past of interacting with the human world. And due to this power struggle, things start getting a little messed up and you're just following what happens. Is a really dark graphic novel, which I really enjoy. I really enjoy all the different stories though. There's different plots going on throughout and you're following everyone's story. So really love this. I recently got this and I haven't read it yet. I've reread the first five a few times, but I haven't actually read this one yet. So I'm excited about getting to it. So I'm gonna be talking about two books coming up now and I really don't know where I'm gonna be at when the readathon comes on the 6th. So I'm putting both of them on there but I'm not planning on reading both of them during the readathon. We're just, they're on there depending on where I'm at for the month. And that is The Son of Neptune and Mark of Athena by Rick Riordan. I recently read The Lost Hero. I really enjoyed that book. I've flew through it. I really wanted to pick up the next books 
it was really refreshing to read this series after work because work is pretty mentally and emotionally draining for me. So I loved picking up this series when I was coming home from work. It was a good time for me to get reading done. So I'm really glad I was able to get my hands on both of these books. I might be starting this book this week and I flew through the first one. I read it within like three or four days. So that would mean if I start it this week, I might be done with it before the readathon comes, which is why I have Mark of Athena. Because there's no way I'm getting through both of these books in one week. It's, I know my reading speed. No, not gonna happen. So for the Dewey's 24 hour readathon, I'll either be reading this or reading this. If you don't know about this series, it's part of the Heroes of Olympus series, which is the second series of Rick Riordan's kind of magical world. The first series is the Percy Jackson series, which I think everyone's heard of. And he's a demigod and his father is Zeus. And he's got to save the world with his friends. So that's the first series. And you kind of have to read the first series before you get to Heroes of Olympus. Because in Heroes of Olympus, they actually cross characters from the first series. So you can't just jump into this one without reading Percy Jackson. They reference a lot of scenarios that happen in the first series. So it's really important to read those books first. But again, they're really easy to read. They're easy books. They're on the edge of middle grade to high school. I would say that the Percy Jackson series is solidly in middle grade. And then this one's more into young adult for me. That's my personal opinion of where the books are at. Highly recommend them though. They're really good reads. So the next three books that I'm going to be talking about, I'm not planning on reading all three of these books from start to finish because I know based on all this other reading that I have, I don't think I'm going to get there. It's possible I may not even get to these books this month, honestly, but I've been meaning to get to them and I'm definitely a mood reader, so I wanted to have the options available. This next book that I'm gonna be talking about, I'm excited about because I've never read it. Uh, if you've watched my booktube newbie tag video, I talked about how Sabriel was the book that really got me into fantasy, which is right here. I recently read all three books and I was actually reading Abortion for the first time really enjoyed it. My main goal for this year is to complete some series that I have been meaning to complete for a while and this is one of those series. So the next book in it is Clariel by Garth Nix. This is book four. I know absolutely nothing about it and I'm completely fine with that. <laughs> I know that I'm gonna love it because I've loved the previous three and yeah. I don't need I don't need anything else. I don't need anything else. I know I'm gonna love it. For those of you who don't know, this series focuses on going back and forth between the land of the living and the dead. And you have the abortion, which is trying to make sure that dead stays where it is and not comes back to the living. But there are people out there, there are necromancers, there are demons, there's monsters that are trying to overrun the world and they're using people who are living like necromancers in order to run the world. So it's a really interesting power balance. I love the magic system that's in here where the abortion uses bells and each bell does a different thing in communicating with the dead. And then you also have charter magic, which my light went out. That's okay. We're going to keep going without the light. And then you have charter magic. It kind of creates things. You can do certain magical properties when you attach these symbols to it. So really excited about getting to this book. The next book I'm going to talk about, I, every time I pick it up, I'm really sad <laughs> because it's pretty beaten up. It's a library book and it makes me sad. So it is The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. 
I really don't know too much about this book. I just know that it's following four characters that seem to have nothing to do with each other and then the paths cross. From what I've heard is that this is fantasy but on the darker side and I love living on the darker side when it comes to my reading material. So this is one of the books that I've been wanting to start this year to see if I want to get into it. Now the reason why it makes me sad to pick up this book, you hear that? It's, you could probably see it too. You see how the plastic is moving? And it's really bad on the back too. And it just, it feels like it's wrapped in saran wrap on the edges. <gasps> I ripped a little bit of it. Oh my God, this book. I almost wanna like, give the library monies to specifically either buy a new book or to restore this book properly because it's it's really sad it's obviously well loved to be in this condition but my god i'm i'm afraid i'm gonna like tear it in half but i am excited about getting to this i'm probably going to start reading like a few chapters of it just to see if it's something that I like and then maybe continue it at a later time. Last but not least, <laughs> the last book on my uh, Dewey's Readathon TBR that I may or may not get to is Paper and Fire by Rachel Kane, and this is part of the Great Library series. This is book two. The first book is Ink and Bone. Ink and Bone if I'm summarizing it correctly, is about these students who want to become a great librarian. To work at the great library is a very powerful position. To have knowledge means you have more power, more influence. So everyone wants to work at the great library. And the first one mainly focuses on their journey of how to qualify to get to the next step to be a great librarian. It's been a while since I've read Ink and Bone. I want to say I read it in 2017, but the summary I just gave you, I, I think it's enough to get me through this book, or at least the first few chapters to kind of refresh my memory on the character names and whatnot. We'll see. I'm really hoping I don't have to reread the first one. I just want to jump into this because I really remember liking the plot and how it went. I'm probably going to use the readathon to read a few chapters to see if I can get into it. And then if I can't, then I know I have to reread the first one. We'll see. And that's all of my books for the April TBR. There's a lot of them. A lot of them. And, uh, uh I'm hoping to get through at least half of them. Like if I could complete my owls and at least read the short books, I'd be happy. I'd be happy. If I start these thicker ones, you know, we'll be good. But I really hope I can get through these. So please leave comments down below if you're gonna be joining in on these readathons, either the owl or the Dewey's 24 hour readathon, or both like me, please let me know down below so that we can chat and talk about the books and encourage each other on reading. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna need it, like really, really need it. If any of these books sound interesting to you or they're also on your TBR, let me know. If there's books that I've mentioned that I don't know anything about, leave your thoughts down below about those books to kind of give me a gauge on whether I should pick them up sooner rather than later. Well, until next time, see you later and have a good day.